Greetings everybody and welcome to my channel. My name is Dan from Fitness with Dan and today we've got a beginner's program. We're going to be focusing on the upper body and the core. We're going to be using two dumbbells um, and it's going to be 20 minutes long. So we've got six exercises today. We've got a regular push-up, some wide rows, a dumbbell push press, some bent over rows, and then to finish off our core section, we have a renegade row and a Russian twist. Okay, so if all of those movements seem quite simple, familiar, or easy to you, and you don't need any instruction on them, instruction on them, jump straight ahead to the video. If you do want a little bit of coaching on them, I'm about to go through them now. So push-ups or press-ups, whatever you want to call them. Um, as this is a beginner's video, we're going to be doing them on our knees, but if you're a little bit more advanced and you're doing this more from a technical perspective, not a fitness perspective, then you can lift your knees off the floor. Um, so, a couple of rules with the press-up. Wrist directly under shoulder, very important. Hips locked in, so we have a straight line from knee, hip to shoulder, or ankle, knee, hip to shoulder. Okay, Those are the most important things. From there, we're just trying to lower ourselves to the floor and push ourselves back off. Inhale on the way down, exhale on the way up. Okay, head position, we want to be looking about that far in front of our hands. So don't look between them, don't look up, just look a little bit in front. And we want to be using the full range of motion available to us. Okay guys, so wide rows. Now, first off, when you're gripping a dumbbell, always make sure you're gripping it like this and squeezing it. I don't know if you can see my hand there. And I'm not letting it hang off my fingers, okay? Got to engage the entire forearm to keep the elbow safe, okay? Plus you get a much better grip. Um, anyway, so the position we're looking for starts off with the feet. Our feet are going to be directly underneath our hips, pointing forwards, knees are forced out, and we're standing nice and straight. Now to get into the position once we've got that down, all we're going to do is stick our bums out and keep our chests and heads up. From there, we're going to travel backwards, hinging at the hips, keeping the weight in our heels, and just let these slide down. Ideally, knee level, if you've got a bit more flexibility, you can get below that. But you want to get to that kind of point where you feel a nice big stretch in your hamstrings, you feel your entire back engaged to support you, but if you were to go any lower, you'd feel you'd have to either bend your knees or you'd have to round your back, okay? We want to prevent those two things from happening. So if you look at the knee, it's a very small bend. If you look at the hips, it's a very big bend. But again, only as far as I can without rounding at all at the back, okay? Now for the duration of the exercise, you're in this position. 40 seconds, three times, plus the fact that it's the same position for a bent over row, is a long time to be in that position, okay? So if you feel that your back is taking too much tension at any point, all you have to do is stand up, squeeze your glutes in your stomach for a second, have a breath, and then pop back into that position, get a couple more reps in. You can do that whenever you want. Now the actual action, the wide row, it's pretty much a bent over row, just a variation of it. So I'm kind of gonna cover a lot about both here. Now, the wide row, we are pulling out ever so slightly and up and we're squeezing our shoulder blades together as we do so. Okay, now one thing I really really want to stress to you guys is this is not an upward pull, this is still a backward pull, okay? So we do not want to be pulling up like this, okay? If you look at the elbow, I don't want it in that position, okay? I want it going behind me here. So you can kind of think elbow in line with the middle of the body, not the shoulder, okay? If that makes sense, not up here, back here. And if you look at the forearm, that's going to be completely vertical, okay? And if I show you from this view, 
90 degrees at the elbow, okay? And you just squeeze your shoulder blades together and then control the way down. Um, because these are coming away from the midline of your body, it makes it particularly hard to control the way down. Don't let the dumbbells touch together on the way down. Okay, so dumbbell push press, guys. Now, there's a few different ways you can stand. Um, I'm going to talk about the second one after I've explained the exercise, actually. So, we want feet pointing forwards and we're about sort of hip shoulder width apart, depending on your ratios. And we're going to get the dumbbells up into this position, okay? So, elbows are going to be pointing forwards. They don't have to be pointing directly forwards and really close like this. They can be a little bit wider, that's absolutely fine. But don't let them point out like this, okay? Shoulders pointing forwards. Now, if you look at the forearm, that's going to stay vertical. Essentially, I'm just pushing overhead and coming down, and that's staying vertical. Now, in terms of how low you go, a lot of people say you can, you should really only go to the point where elbows shoulder height. I think a little bit differently, and it kind of depends what you're trying to do. Um, for us, we're going to go all the way down until we feel like if we had to go any further, that forearm would no longer be vertical. Okay, so keep it vertical, that's your finish point. Um, now, how we're gonna get the dumbbells up? We wanna be using a kinetic chain, okay? It's very hard for our shoulders to just, just to do this, okay? So I'm gonna take a little bit of a bend, and then I'm gonna push very short and sharp to get me through the hardest phase of that, which is gonna be from here to here, okay? Then I'm gonna be using my shoulders pretty much just to lock the elbow out at the end, okay? So I'll show you a couple. I'm up here, I'm set, my head's up, I load and I explode and I control. Okay, I'll show you something from the side view. Okay, and what you'll also notice is these are going directly above my head, not in front of me, and I'm not leaning back. So that brings me on to the second stance. Now, when you guys get a little bit tired, you're gonna find uh, your body will try to cheat to get those above your head. And one big way that our bodies like to do that is by leaning back. So you can see that they are going straight up, but I'm no longer straight. I'm essentially in this position, okay? Um, so if you find that's the case and you begin to take a little bit of tension in your lower back, I'd say either stop, that's fine, take a little bit extra rest, or you can split your stance like so, okay? So my weight's still pretty much in the middle, right? But I've got one leg in front of the other, both toes are still pointing forwards, and I'm making sure I'm on my toes, so my heel's pointing upwards, I'm not like this. Okay, and I can still do the same kind of uh, load, explode, push, and that's just gonna stop you from leaning back too much. Because over here, you can lean very, very, very far back. Over here, you're going to get stuck, okay? So you can't lean that far back because you've stacked your stance. And that is your push press. So bent over rows. Um, I don't need to go through the position on this one because it's exactly the same as the wide rows. The only thing you're doing different is with your arms, okay? So with the wide rows, we had this, okay? With the bent over row, you're going to actually start in the same position I want you to, but you're going to turn out as you pull and the elbows are going to come close to your body, okay? Just like so. And the direction of the pull on this one is your hands will start just in front of your knees and you will trace the line of your thigh and squeeze your shoulder blades together. Everything else is the same. You're in the lowest range you could possibly be, squeezing the shoulder blades together, head still looking forwards, Okay, that's your bent over row. The main difference between the two of them is just a little bit of a shift in the focus. They're gonna work pretty much the same muscles, just to slightly different ratios, okay? The wide one's gonna be working a little bit more on scapular adduction, so rhomboids in particular, and this one is gonna get a little bit more lats involved, okay? Right, renegade rows. So the renegade row is a little bit more for the core than anything else, there are elements of upper body because you're stabilizing yourself in that position and you are pulling the main focus is here okay so the thing with the renegade row what most people tend to get wrong when we're doing it with one dumbbell um, it can be done with two dumbbells I actually prefer it with two dumbbells but it can be a little bit hard on the hands and it depends on the kind of dumbbells you have 
Um, so seeing as I don't know what kind of dumbbells you have, this is a beginner's video, we're going to do it with one. Um, now like I said, the mistake I see most people make is they put it between their hands. I want you to put this dumbbell directly underneath your chest, okay? So you're going to have your hands in front and you're in this plank position and that dumbbell is directly under your chest, okay? Hands are going to be fairly close together, shoulder width are a bit narrower if you want it to be a bit easier, and these are going to be a little bit wider apart. Okay, this is going to give you the stability. Now the main thing we want here is nothing moving. Okay, we've got beer on our backs and we're trying not to spill it. So all you're going to do is take one hand off the floor, grab that dumbbell and imagine you're doing a bent over row. Pull it to the hip, pop it back down, ground yourself, take a breath and... Okay, it's going to feel a little bit awkward. Okay. Um, it's not really going to work the back the same way a bent over row or any other kind of row will because the range of motion is just not there, the angle's a bit off because you're pulling from the inside and that kind of stuff but like I said that's not our focus so that doesn't matter. You guys are going to want to put this back between your hands when you finish. You're going to have an urge to pull from here and put it back in between your hands, okay? Don't do that because what ends up happening is when you then put that hand down, it ends up going in front of the body and we just completely lose the core engagement. Okay, so make sure that's going back underneath your chest. Okay, okay so Russian twists, guys. Now, these are an extremely popular exercise, um, extremely commonly used. And I would imagine, probably most of you have done a Russian twist at some point, and I would imagine a large number of those of you who have done a Russian twist at some point, um, while you probably have felt it working around here, we also felt a lot of tension in the front of your hips here, particularly the lower back. That's the most common complaint I've, um, I've had training people. Now, the thing with the Russian twist is, like I said, it's really, really, really common, really, really, really popular, um, and it can be a great exercise, and it can also be a really, really bad exercise if not taught properly, and I find most people don't. So, um, I'm going to take a little bit extra time on this one because there's a few concepts you guys are going to have to understand before you can really activate this and keep everything else out of the equation and safe. So first off we're going to be doing the Russian twist with our feet down because until we kind of understand a little bit more about what's going on in the upper body it's pointless taking the feet off the floor. Okay so this is your starting position you're going to support yourself with your hands on your knees. Now what what people find is that if you try and raise your chest and keep nice and straight, this takes pressure. If you don't, this takes pressure. Okay, and we want all the pressure here. So the way to do that, guys, is in this position here. So I'm leaning back, got about 90 degrees at the hips, about 90 degrees at the knees. Okay, all I'm going to do is I'm going to shorten this distance. Okay, so the rectus abdominis, the uh, kind of six pack, classic six pack kind of look. If you imagine that runs from here to here in that little band, you will know what it would look like. So you're squeezing that, okay? You're bringing, your, um, bringing the bottom of your ribs and your, the top of your pelvis closer together and kind of locking in, okay? So once again, do this with me. 90, 90, lock. Now that doesn't move, okay? From there, I now take my hands away and I do raise my chest, so you can see my back's hunched, hands come away, chest raises, I'm not hunched anymore, and I've got a nice straight posture. Now be quite careful when you do this, because if you lessen the tension here, okay, then you just end up extending from here and not from here, and you're just going to be putting pressure there when you're twisting. However, even if you do keep it on, if you extend too far, Again, you're going to put pressure there, okay? So play around with it and try and find the point before you pick a dumbbell up, before you even try to twist, try and find a point where you feel nothing but tension at the front of the stomach. So once again, with me guys, 90, 90, squeeze, raise the chest and find that point where it's raised, you feel the back straight, you feel the spine supported, not any pressure over here, it's all over here. Then you're in the right position. Then it's just a case of grabbing your dumbbell and twisting like so. Okay, how you hold the dumbbell, I'll leave it up to you. One thing I will say as well 
is we're trying to get a rotation of the torso here. So the fact that we're leaning back, that, that's your classic kind of six pack stuff holding you up and engaging. The thing that's twisting you, this is going to be muscles round here, okay, your obliques. That's the kind of target of the Russian twist. Um, so in order to get those, the torso needs to go into rotation. It's not a case of moving the dumbbell off center, it's a case of the torso going with it. So you want to imagine that that dumbbell and your chest are kind of strapped together, keep them in a line, and just go as far as you can, like so. You can let the dumbbell go a little bit further if you want, but don't bother trying to tap it on the floor or anything. Just so I'm thinking of showing you my shoulder, showing you my shoulder, okay? This is gonna do next to nothing. All right, that's everything, guys. So very quickly, system we're using, got three pairs, okay? Press up some wide rows, we're gonna do them three times. Push press and bent over rows, three times. Renegade rows and Russian twists, three times. Everything is gonna be 40 seconds of work, 20 seconds of rest. I'm gonna give you guys a one minute break between the sections. Um, and that's it. So make sure you've got some water next to you. Make sure you've had a warm up. Make sure you've practiced the Russian twist and found a place where you feel just this and not this. Can't emphasize that much. Uh, can't emphasize that enough, guys. Um, and when you're ready, let's get cracking. All right, guys and gals, press up some wide rows to start and get yourselves onto your mat. Well, and in a couple seconds. So wrist directly underneath the hip. Uh, shoulder, hips locked in, and off we go. Lower down, push up. Breathe in, breathe out. Make sure we're using the full range available to us. Okay, so the top are straightening the elbow, trying to separate the shoulders a little bit, uh, shoulder blades a little bit. And on the way down, we're going as far as we can without breaking form as we push up. chest up, shoulders back and down, and then we're going to stick our bums out, hinge as far as we can, and here we go. Pulling nice and wide, controlling the way down. Our focus here, guys, is the position. Back extended the whole time, big bend at the hips, small bend at the knees, and we're squeezing our shoulder blades together as we pull controlling down. Keep that thumb wrapped around, keep the grip tight. <sighs> Head's looking forwards. If you need a break, stand up, squeeze the stomach and glutes, pop back in. <sighs> Remember guys, it's still a backwards pull, okay? Not an upwards pull. Okay, one round down, two to go. Get yourselves ready. Press ups again. Here we go. Nice slow and controlled on the way down, explosive and powerful on the way up. Make sure that wrist is directly under the shoulder the whole time and those hips Stay locked in, so we feel some tension in our stomach, a little bit in our bums, nothing in the lower back. Okay. Remember guys, with that wide row, you, um, you want to be using your full range of motion, okay? The lower you go, the more of a distance you've got to pull. Okay, so you're gonna get a lot more out of it. Okay, here we go. Hinge and pull, okay? So don't try and go too low by bending your knees. So hip bend. And make sure 
that you're not rounding your back, okay? We've got extension of the spine, bums out, chest out, head up. A solid grip on the dumbbells. Breathing out as we pull. Good. Now the other thing was with this is the shoulder blades. Like we said, we're squeezing them together as we pull. And we're gonna feel them separate as we control down. But we also want to initiate the movement by squeezing them together. I'll talk a bit more about that on your next round. Go. Last one on the wide rows. So, when I say initiating with the shoulder blades, your elbow is moving and your shoulder is moving, okay? I don't want to, having just had them separate, initiate by trying to bend my elbow. I want to initiate by squeezing my shoulder blades together and then pulling through with the elbow. Just keep everything safe and activate the right bits. Off we go. Stand up at any point if you need a break. Okay, because that back cannot round. The spine will take pressure if it does. Okay, you guys have a full minute to rest. So push, press, and bend over rows. Now, bend over rows, very similar to wide rows, follow the same rules. Shoulder blades need to initiate, okay? Now the reason for this, as I mentioned earlier, is it's gonna activate the right muscles and keep everything safe. Um, but really it's gonna stabilize and lock your shoulder blades into place, okay? Because when you try and pull, with the shoulder blades are out of place, they don't really like it, okay? So lock them in and pull through. We need them to initiate, okay? The torso, the muscles there are much bigger than the muscles in the arms. Okay, so the arms are just assisting. We really want to be working our backs. Right, now push press. Actually, we've got a bit of extra rest. Don't copy me, I don't know what I'm doing. Still got 20 seconds, have a drink. So remember the stance is there's two you can go for. I would ideally like you to try this first if you find you're leaning back and go into the staggered option. Um, right, dumbbells up. Here we go. Load, explode, control. Load, explode, control. Remember guys, those elbows are always pointing forwards. I'm not letting them come out here. Pointing forwards. Good. What I'm kind of imagining with the elbows is like, I'm a, Guy that hits the ball in baseball, whatever you call it, and I've got that kind of field. So my elbows can go anywhere in that field, but not outside of it. Right, bent over rows, guys. So, nice solid grip, hinge, and rotate as you pull. 
Okay, so now we're going from knee to hip. Still squeezing our shoulder blades together. Still initiating with the shoulder blades. Still breathing out as we pull. But this time we're imagining that we're putting those dumbbells in our pockets. Okay. Even thinking about trying to get your elbows to touch each other. They won't, don't actually try to do that, but imagine you are. Okay, so there's a kind of inward motion to it. Good, okay, some more rest, and we're back onto the push press. So remember that baseball kind of pitch thing, and that load explode bit. So you don't wanna load and then use the legs to push up, it's gotta be an explode, it's gotta be a Okay, almost as if you're about to jump. Right, here we go. Remember, we're going directly above the head, okay? Not in front. stand up in between if you need to. Okay, grab them, nice solid grip. You guys know what to do. Hinge, head up, chest up. Pull. Remember it's a backwards pull, guys. Tracing the line of your thigh. Get as much of a hip hinge as you can. Okay, ideally, you're gonna be almost horizontal at the torso without bending the knees too much. Good. Okay, small break. Also remember with the uh, bent over rows, it's that initiating with the shoulder blade and pulling through, okay? And it's a backwards pull, not an upwards pull. All right, dumbbells up, ready for your push press. I'll show you a staggered stance this time. In terms of your head, you want to be looking just a little bit up. Not completely up, just a little bit. Good, okay, one more on the rows. And then we're on to our core section. Whew. I think should be, I could be wrong. Okay, grab them. And off you go. When you're squeezing your shoulder blades together, guys, think about pinning the bottom parts of your shoulder blades together, not the top parts. Okay, the shoulders wanna be away from our ears the whole time. We don't wanna have any shrugging going on. Four minute rest, there's someone at my door. I'm gonna run and try and get that before we start the next section. Hey 
it's for me. I should probably think about what that could be before I throw it. Oops. Okay, guys, so the last section is Renegade Rows and Russian Twists. You only need one dumbbell. Now remember, with the Renegade Row, you're in the same position as your press up, and that dumbbell is below the chest. And our main focus is keeping everything still. Okay, so don't worry too much about the row. Um, don't pull like outwards or anything, definitely not upwards. Do try and pull towards the hip, um, but I'm, I'm not too fast. Like I said, you're not gonna get the same range. You're not gonna get the same kind of activation at the back. We can pretty much consider our back worked today. This is all about the core, okay? It's about keeping still. So, dumbbell under the chest, hands in front. When you hear that bell, Pull toward the hip. Okay, you should feel the pressure in your stomach when you take a hand off the floor, and you should feel it increase even further when you go to lift the dumbbell. So that's when we really need to be breathing out. Breath in when the hand goes down. To get that beer on your back, do not drop it. Cool, okay. Right, get yourselves ready for Russian twists. Take your time with the setup, guys. Okay, remember, about 90 at the knee, 90 at the hip. So you're laying back. You can support with the hands while you get the right position. And then once you've got the right position, So you'll notice my breathing is a short, sharp breath out as I'm hitting that point where I'm about to reverse direct. Keep it going, guys. My battery just died, hence the break in what I was saying. Good, okay, one down, two to go. I didn't take too much rest, it only took me about 20 seconds to change the battery. Um, and I realized straight away this time. Get back to your Renegade Rows. I'll fill you in on what I was talking about on the Russian twists when we get back to it in a second. Okay. Here we go. Breathing guys, keep that beer nice and still. Core's nice and tight, you should even feel tension in your glutes to keep, uh, help keep your hips in extension. Good, get ready for Russian twists. Now, as I was saying before, the battery very rudely died. Man, everything's going wrong with this video today. Um, when you come away from your midline and you're about to switch directions, that's when you need the most pressure here, so that's when you're breathing out. Okay, here we go. And when you reach the middle, you need the least pressure, so you inhale. It's a rotation of the torso we're looking for. I'll show you this way. Not the arms. Okay, we've only worked our arms today. Torso's turn. Good. One more round to go. Okay, get yourselves into position. So the feeling of squeezing this is the same for the Renegade Row and the Russian Twist. Okay, so it's that kind of shortening there, keeping the chest up and keeping that tension. Okay. Keep 
breathing, keep that stomach tight. Remember, keep pulling to the hip. Don't pull upwards, don't pull outwards. Keep those hips and shoulders from rocking. Good, okay, one more on the Russian twist and we are done. Okay. So, get yourself set up, guys. Lock that in. And here we go. Chill out guys, you can hug your knees to your chest, go into child pose, do whatever you need to do, have a drink of water, um, and rest. So, thank you for joining me everybody, I hope that all went okay, and I hope you learned a little something about some of the positions, or if you already knew what you were doing, I hope that cemented your knowledge on some of the positions you should be getting into, to maximise what we're trying to do, keep everything safe. Okay, um, so if you enjoyed that video or that's something you'd like to do again, make sure you like, subscribe and hit the favourites button so you can just go into your favourites and do that video again whenever you want to. Make sure you have a cool down and I'll see you guys again next time.